Singh versus Maruti Mathani. That's for the WBA Light Flyweight World Championship. Then the IBF Flyweight World title is on the line. China versus Venezuela. And then the much heralded young Filipino contender, Jack Tapura, squaring off against Triple C, they call him, Edvaldo Ortega for the WBA featherweight title. And then, of course, our main event, the one the world has been waiting for, Lucas Matisse and Manny Pacquiao. So this is when I'll introduce everybody. Alongside Chris Algieri and Dan Castillejo, my name is Todd Grisham. And Diane, you've been locked into that Manny Pacquiao camp all week long. You've known him for almost two decades. What's the buzz right now? I have never seen Manny as serious in training camp. He was early for every session. He climbed the highest hills. He was very determined. He told his team, this is the time when we really need to break it down and just put up our A game. So Manny is as enthusiastic as he's ever been. He wants to become world title again. Many people have asked him, why are you fighting? He says, because I love boxing. Chris, as we look at the fighter arrivals from Tuesday, you've talked to Lucas Matisse multiple times. You've been in the ring with Manny Pacquiao. What's the mentality right now for the Argentinian? You know, facing Manny Pacquiao, it's not just a fight. It's a whole experience. Matisse is experiencing that now, coming here. It is a, it is a, uh, Manny Pacquiao is a rock star when he fights. He is constantly surrounded by people. The lobby has been buzzing all week long. Matisse is going to see that. He's going to feel that. And we're going to see what happens on fight night. And as it is, every time Manny Pacquiao comes to a city, it is a circus. People around him everywhere, Diane. How does he focus when he's surrounded by such chaos? This is the unbelievable thing about Manny. He is so used to this. Like, it doesn't even bother him. Like, tonight, we're expecting many heads of state to be here. We've asked him, how does he feel? He goes, oh, that's, that's really fun. He's, like, really looking forward. He's just really used to the big stage. He thrives on it. He loves people being around him. Not only did he several heads of state, the president of the Philippines yes. has made the trip down to Malaysia and will be in attendance tonight. One other interesting note, we showed you outside of the arena. It looks dark. It is not nighttime, ladies and gentlemen. It's still morning. Chris, it's 8 a.m. local time. What's it like to fight in the morning? You faced Manny Pacquiao in China before noon. Yeah, I fought at the same time. It was about 11 a.m. Um, it's, it's, it's definitely an experience, and it's something that you have to prepare for, something you have to think about throughout the camp. Uh, the Matisse camp said they came out nice and early. They're used to the time zone, and it will not be a problem come fight time. As I mentioned, four world title fights, and we get start next with the IBF Flyweight Championship of the World on the line. All right. We welcome you to Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. We're at the Sports City Complex, and what a beautiful day it is, and what an exciting time it is. The biggest boxing event to hit this area since 1975, when Muhammad Ali faced Joe Bugner for the World Heavyweight Championship. We're inside the Axiata Arena, and we've got four world title fights. This is being called the biggest card in Asian boxing history, and you'll be seeing it live here tonight. Welcome inside, and yes, the air conditioning's working, which is great because it's almost 90 degrees already. It's just past 8 in the morning here at local time. Already fans filling in, getting set for what should be a historic morning of boxing. Let's take a look at our fight card tonight. Our first world title fight will take place in the flyweight division. The IBF world title is on the line when Moroti babyface Ntalani squares off against the Falcon Mohamed Wasim. Then we go to the WBA world title in the light flyweight division, Lou Ben and Triple C, they call him. And then the featherweight division, WBA world title, Edvaldo Ortega and Jack Tapura, the much heralded young Philippine star. He's unbeaten at just 25 years old. He hopes to break into superstardom with a victory tonight. And then, of course, the main event the world has been waiting for, Manny Pacquiao squaring off against Lucas Matisse for his WBA welterweight championship. Alongside 
the former junior welterweight champion of the world, Chris Algieri and Diane Castillejo, our Filipino reporter. My name is Todd Grisham. Chris, you fought Manny Pacquiao for a world title over in China. What's Lucas Matisse's week been like here in Malaysia? One thing about facing Manny Pacquiao, it's not just about the fight. It's an actual experience. As soon as you arrive on, on location, it is just a ton of energy around you. Manny Pacquiao is nothing short of a rock star when it comes to the amount of energy and activity that's a, that surrounds his camp on fight week. Diane, you've known Manny Pacquiao for nearly 20 years. How does he handle all this the circus-like atmosphere that follows him everywhere he goes? That is one of the unique, qu amazing qualities of Manny Pacquiao. No matter what is going on around him, he seems to be able to focus. He just loves people being around him. He loves all the energy. He loves all the excitement. And coming into this camp, he feels the same. At the fighter meetings, and um, you know, he, he's ready to, to go out there, use his experience. You know, what seems only got eight pro fights. You know, I'm, I'm curious to see how he deals with someone with so much experience. Now it's time for our tale of the tape. It's Pakistan versus South Africa. As you can see, a huge gap. In experience, but Wasim very accomplished in the amateur ranks. Both men with an orthodox stance, and as you can see, the reach and height almost identical. And you know it's a big fight when the man standing in the ring is in the building. Yes, the white tuxedo clad Michael Buffer is our ring announcer. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Asiata Arena here in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia, where MP Promotions is proud to present World Championship Boxing for your entertainment. And it's all sanctioned by Pack Token, kryptonizing popularity through GCOX and Philippine Airlines, the official carrier of Team Pacquiao. All the bouts are sanctioned by the Malaysia Professional Boxing Organization, Commissioners Mr. Matthew Fritz Gaston, Dr. Nasser Cruz, and Mr. Giovanni Menez. This contest also sanctioned by the International Boxing Federation, President and Supervisor at Ringside, Mr. Daryl J. Peoples. The three judges scoring this bout from Puerto Rico, Senor Samuel Canda. From the Philippines, Mr. Sylvester Avianza. From the United States, Mr. Glenn Feldman and your referee in charge of the action at the bell from the United States, Mr. Malik Waleed. And now 12 rounds of boxing for the vacant IBF Flyweight Championship of the World. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing black and white, official weight 111 and one half pounds. His professional record, an excellent one, 35 victories. 24 big wins by knockout, only two defeats from KwaZulu Natha, Republic of yes. South Africa, the two-time flyweight world yes. champion, Moruti Babyface Ngale. And his opponent across the ring, fighting out of the red corner, wearing white with green and officially weighing in at 111.3 pounds. His professional record, a perfect one. In eight fights, eight Go victories, on, including six go, go, go. wins by knockout from Kedah, Pakistan, the undefeated Mohammed Falcon Wasi. Okay, fellas, you both have been given the rules in the dressing room. I'm expecting good, clean boxing. When I say break, stop punching, take a full step back. Remember, protect yourselves at all times. Touch gloves. Good luck to you both. Muhammad the Falcon Wasim fighting out of Pakistan. Perhaps the most famous Pakistani boxer, Amir Khan, really isn't Pakistani. He's got a heritage in Pakistan, but he's from Britain. And Wasim didn't let any uh, hold any punches back. He's not a big Amir Khan fan. Feels that he doesn't get support from him. Neither do any of the other Pakistani boxers. Yes, his entire team made, made, made a point of that uh, to say that they are the first Pakistani uh, fighter to fight for a world title here, and that he is the pride of Pakistan. Mouthpiece. Yeah. Okay. 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 Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. 
So the Falcon Wasim in the white trunks. Maruti babyface Mutalani in the black. This is for the vacant IBF World Championship. 12 rounds, flyweight division. Chris, I know you studied a lot of tape for this fight. What are these styles going to look like? You know, both of these guys are come forward fighters. They're, they're, they're both very aggressive. Um, Wasim's actually starting a little bit more measured at the moment, uh, actually using his jab and kind of seeing what uh, Maruti comes, comes to the table with. I expect an all-action fight, though, once this starts to get heated up. Of the four world title fights, that's eight different athletes. I would have to say Wasim, Keep him the, up. the Falcon, certainly the most, I would say, confident, Chris. He, he felt like he's already won this fight, doesn't expect it to even be a tough battle. At the fighter meeting, he said that the result was going to be 100% a KO. He's got 12 rounds to do it. Like I said, Mutalani hasn't lost in 10 years. Not an easy out by any stretch of the imagination. Right, nice right hand there from Mutalani. You know, Mutalani just it looks like he's uh, he's bringing the pressure. He's letting his hands go. Um, he's kind of seeing where, where the openings are as he's as he's throwing against uh, Wasim. And Wasim, like I said earlier, is just, just kind of being measured, picking his spots. Nice uppercut followed by a left hand there from Mutalani, who's all of a sudden pushing the pace. Great physique by Wasim. He certainly looks the part, doesn't he? Absolutely. He's uh, he's rehydrated well. He looks very strong, very fit. Um, you know, this is a huge opportunity for him, so I'm sure he took it very seriously in training. Good body shot there. Mutalani trained in Johannesburg for this fight. Said he really worked hard on his conditioning, trained at altitude. Believes this is going to go into the late rounds. Wants to be ready. I'd like to see Wasim use a little bit more of that amateur pedigree. Use that jab, use that in and out. Um, you know, give a little bit of space. He seems like he's just kind of coming forward and standing in front of, of, of Maruti right now. Perhaps the biggest sport in Pakistan is cricket. And Wasim told us that a lot of world famous cricketers no from Pakistan are fans of his and are watching tonight in Pakistan. So hello to that country. Let's see if Muhammad can make you proud. Nice counter punch there from Wasim as we close round one. Chris, what did you make of that first? To Maruti on the strength of um, him, him being more active. You know, he was uh, he was really really busy with both hands. He kept coming forward. He actually actually picking the pace up as the round went on. I expect him to keep that up as the fight goes. And yes, you may have recognized that face. Jeff Mayweather, the 54-year-old uncle of Floyd Mayweather Jr. He trained with Wasim in Las Can't Vegas. He feels he's got a real star in that corner. Yeah, there was um, there was a lot of mention of Jeff Mayweather and, and how the work has been over the years and, and how he's just progressed as a pro. And um, he, he's he's far more experienced than his eight fights as a pro would, would tell you. I know you gave Wasim that first round, but Mutalani certainly got his shots in as well. Looks like a competitive fight so far. I actually gave that first round to, to Maruti based on a. Uh, uh, oh, I'm sorry. Excuse me. Then, then we agree. <laughs> <laughs> and what's the most difficult thing, Chris, when you're a young fighter like 
Well, Asim, is when you fight a veteran, someone like Mutalani, who's been in 37 fights. You know, it's it's the unknown. You can you can say you know what a guy's going to do. You can expect you know you can say I can expect this, I can expect that. But uh, until you've seen it and uh, in, in between those those ropes, you don't exactly know. Um, Rudy seeing it all. So Wasim is going to find that, um, you know, does he really know what's going on when he's uh, when he's in there with a veteran like this? Nice left hook landed there for Babyface. I like I like Rudy's activity. You know, he's he's very very consistent. He's using both hands well up and down. Muhammad got backed up there, shook his head no, but that's a sign that Muthalani is starting to impose his will, perhaps. Keep in mind, Wasim's only had eight professional hit? fights, much of them against limited competition. Yeah, this is a huge step up in class for him. In fact, Wasim told us his last fight, which was in Panama, was supposed to be against an opponent, but they couldn't find him two days before the fight, wasn't answering his phone calls, no one knew where he was, so they found a, a late replacement in Jose Calvo that Wasim dispatched by first round knockout. And Wasim said, listen, my original opponent just got scared and, and left town. <laughs> nice jab from no Mutalani. Like I said in the first round, Rudy looked like he was just looking for some openings. It seems like he's finding them now. He's, he's, he's able to s sniper some shots in between the guard of, of Wasim and is, uh, is landing with much more frequency in this round. Nice one-two on the inside from Wasim. A lot of close quarters fighting so far. Mm -hmm. This is kind of what I expected from both guys because of their, their styles are both to come forward. There's not going to be a whole lot of footwork on a lot of dancing around. These guys are going to meet in the center of the ring and they're going to fight it out from both sides. Clubbing right hand from Mutalani. Good back and forth action so far in round number two. A lot of punches being thrown by both men. Both men seem like they're in incredible condition. I, I don't expect them to let up on their on their output at all. Mutalani with an exclamation point, a body shot to end round two. I gave him round two again. Again, based on uh, on his activity, but also I think he actually landed a lot of clean punches that round. He's definitely finding the holes in Wasim's defense. This replay here shows that Belani really, really pressing the action here, coming forward, letting both hands go high and low. Um, you know, he's he's been sneaking in some great uppercuts in between there, off the body shots, and um, you know, he he actually was much more accurate in round number two than he was in round number one. When you finish on the jab, get the left hand back to the system as fast as you can. Okay, I want your defense impeccably tight. Okay, breathe. Chris, I know you're a former world champion kickboxer as well. This almost looks, without the kicks obviously, like a Dutch style kickboxing fight. They both have the high guard, punch me three times, I'll punch you three times. Absolutely, not much footwork being involved here. These guys are standing in front of each other going, going tip for tack. Um, it makes for an exciting fight, that's for sure. And a bruising one as well. Don't know what these guys' faces are gonna look like comes around, come round 11 or 12. Yeah, we've already seen some, uh, some marked up around okay. Marudi's uh, right eye on the outside. No doubt from the jab and the left hook of Wasim. Mutalani, some heavy shots to start the round. What do you make of Wasim's strategy so far? Usually when you're a younger fighter, you try and use more, like you said, maybe more footwork, get a little more spacing, try and get some energy out of Mutalani. Ooh, good shot from, uh, from Mutalani there. I expected Wasim to, to, like I said earlier, to, to use a little bit more footwork, a little more push and pull in and out. Um, you know, when you got a fighter like, like Maruti who's only going to come forward, having that little bit of push forward, pull back, and counter, it can be very effective. Mutalani landing the harder shot. There's another one, a left hook, and a second one, and Wasim off balance a little bit here. Mutalani has landed three very hard punches so far in this round number three. 
fast. And the confidence that we saw or heard from Wasim in our fighter interviews not showing itself right now as Mutalani starting to take over a little bit here in round three. Now we see Wasim letting those hands go, letting the punches fly. When he throws, he, he, he's, he's effective. He just hasn't been throwing much. The left hook has been the punch for Babyface so far. If you notice, Wasim is very heavy on that front leg, you know, which is indicative of an offensive fighter. But he's not that active with his hands. He needs that. He needs to either fight a little bit more off that back foot and use his jab, or he needs to just become more active. Mutalani yeah. caught him coming in and then going back out. You see Mutalani's experience oh. showing here. He's, he's picking different kinds of punches now. He's hooking that right hand now instead of throwing it straight. He's using the jab in between the action when the, there's actually a break in distance. Uh, very, very clean stuff so far from uh, Mutalani. And if you want to know how dedicated Mutalani is to his craft and how well he is conditioned, think about this, Chris. Since turning, a, since turning pro 17 years ago, he's still in the same weight class. He's a flyweight. That is incredible. That shows a lot of discipline outside of the ring and in between fights as well, um, where a lot of guys tend to blow up in weight and it becomes more and more difficult to maintain your, your weight class. Made his debut at 18, now he's 35. Keep him up. Chopping right at the hand there from Mutalani. Mutalani seems to have figured Wasim out. Yeah, you're right, Todd. It just seems like Mutalani is just much more sure of what he wants to do in there, and uh, he, he is, you know, pushing, pushing the pace, pushing, pushing the punches, landing the better shots. <laughs> Back to position straight away. Keep doing what you're doing. Okay? Do not change the formula to success. Okay? That jab up the middle is working like a boss. Those combinations are. Got a are replay coming up here of Epilani landing a nice position, overhand right, which I said right. earlier. He uh, yeah. he's changing up the punch. He's not throwing them straight. He's Breathe. looping them over the top. And he's able That's to pull to uh, land that shot Breathe. as as Wasim pulled back. So we're going to see more of Anthelani being super consistent and now using the jab when there is a little bit of space. Um, jabbing his way in, jabbing his way out, coming to the body, ripping punch shots on both sides. Anthelani's quarter has got to be very happy with the way the fight's going right now. Wasim, the first native of Pakistan to challenge for a world title, needs to maybe perhaps change some things right now. What would your advice be? My advice would be make a little bit of distance and use your jab. Um, be not, not, not be so heavy on that front foot. Have a little bit on, off that fighting off that back foot. Um, make Emphalani reach and come forward and look to counter. Wasim's got the longer arms. He's he's uh, he's got a little bit of a height advantage. He's got he's got to utilize that. If you're wondering about the falcon moniker for Wasim, it says that's the most popular bird in Pakistan. It's revered and it comes down and snatches its prey with. Lightning quick precision. That's what he says he does to his opponents. Well, we're still waiting to see that lightning quick precision on, on his offense. No, 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 no. Stop. No, no. Warned for a little shoulder push was Wasim. You can see a little bit of concern on uh, on Wasim's face at this point. Um, and it's, it's, it's forcing him to fight a little bit different. You see him being a little more active, using a little more in and out, um, trying to make things happen here. And I, I like what he's doing. Todd Grisham alongside Chris Algieri, Diane Castillejo roaming around. She'll be our reporter. You'll see her in a few minutes. Of course, still to come tonight, our main event, Lucas Matisse and Manny Pacquiao. And this place will be jam-packed in about an hour and a half, two hours from now. Good action from Wasim here. He's, he's definitely starting to pick it up. He's, he's finding his rhythm. He's even getting a little bit better on his defense, able to make Enfilani miss some of those shots on the inside.
know what I like about Wasim? He keeps his eyes very open. He wants to see everything that's going on. Um, even on the inside, when, he, when, he's, when he's looking to be offensive or defense, he's got his eyes open, looking for, looking for openings. Another one-two from Untalani. Just when you think Wasim's starting to maybe turn a corner, he gets pushed backwards. Untalani is very good at finding the right punch to land at the right time. And that's something that only can come with experience. And you know, a guy who's 35 and 2, Keep him up. a former world champion, you maybe haven't heard much of babyface Umtalani. That's because his trainer said no one will fight him. Just took a couple of money fights back in the day, had to relinquish a title, but he's just excited to be on this platform, 35 years old. Doesn't seem to have lost much. Utilani beat Julio Miranda for a vacant IBF crown in 2009, but said other world champions had ducked him. Tried to unify, but no one would do it. Good right hand there from Utilani. Wasim is definitely putting more pressure now. He's actually backing Utilani up. Um, still getting hit with, with quite a few punches, but um, there's definitely a change in momentum. Did he do enough to win the round? Uh, not my, not my book. Get the bird, fellas. You got a little. The machine is in the building. There he is, the reigning welterweight champion, Lucas Matisse. What did you make of him at the weigh-in yesterday? You were a little concerned with his body language, Chris. Yeah, um, he, you know, he, he was definitely very confident in the fighter meetings, but at, at the weigh-in, he just it looked like the show was affecting him a little bit. Uh, I can kind of see it in his eyes, but um, you know, when it comes down to stepping between those ropes, it, it doesn't matter if you're nervous at, during the weigh-in or whatnot. Um, you got to come out there and, and do your job. That weigh-in was certainly intense. There was probably what 3,000 people at the weigh-in, and I would say. 99.9 percent .9 were there screaming their heads off for Manny Pacquiao. That's absolutely true. It was it was quite intense in there. And I'll tell you what, the second biggest star was Chris Algieri. How many pictures did you end up taking yesterday? Oh man, if, if I had a nickel for every one, I'd have a lot of nickels. <laughs> of course, you fought Manny Pacquiao back in 2014 in Macau, China. How's it feel to be back in, e in Asia again? That's great. I mean, the, the fan base here is incredible. Manny Pacquiao's um, um, team and, and have been very welcoming since I've, they've, they've, I've arrived. Um, and, you know, the Filipino people, man, I feel like they're my people. I, they're, they're such great, uh, such great culture, such, such nice people. Everyone you meet is just the nicest people you're ever going to meet. Some issue with the, looks like the yeah, laces are sticking out of the tape. You know, the reason that we, we actually tape up the lace is because the lace has a, a, a little plastic tip on the end. It also is very abrasive, so that can cause abrasions on the skin. So we're going to make sure you cover that up with some softer tape. So back at it they go. At least I thought back at it they go. Got to clean up the corner now, well, maybe spill some water, some Vaseline. I don't want your guy to slip on it. <laughs> How we good? We good? Okay, let's go. All right, here we go. We're scheduled for 12 rounds here in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. Round five between Mohamed Wasim and Roti Umtalani out of South Africa. Not too many 35-year-olds are nicknamed Babyface, but when you get that, you get that nickname when you're a teenager, you stick with it. Hey, and honestly, I mean, if it still works, the shoe still fits. Why not wear it? Still got a pretty clean face for a 35-year-old, 17-year pro. Interesting story about Muhammad Wasim. Said he was eight years old when he started boxing, lived in a very difficult area. No, 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 stop! There's some, there's some controversy about how old he truly is. His documents say he was born in 1987, but he says he was born in 1989. He was too young to fight as an amateur, so lied about his age. So is he 28 or not? Only he knows for sure and his family members. Hands free. Yes! Yes! 
Nice uppercut there from Asim. He has his moments every round, Chris, but it seems like Mutalani has more moments. You know, it, it's, at this point, it's, it's, it's consistency versus spots. And um, M M Thelani has been very consistent throughout. Um, he's been building the pressure, landing more and more punches. Watch your head. In spots, the Falcon looks great. He looks sharp, looks explosive, ah, no, just no, like that. Up. Throws great combinations, moves his head. But it just seems that M Thelani is getting to, to in control of more of the timing. Well, the Falcon told us, look, I can box, but I can also brawl. Would it maybe benefit him to try and lure Intelani into just an all-out assault? If he's going to do that, he's going to have to be busier. You know, if, if he can't, he, he looks like he's unsure of what he wants to do. Do I want to box? Do I want to bang? Um, if he's going to bang, he's got to go all in because he's getting out punched at the moment. There's a nice combination from Wasim. <laughs> What an incredible Watch testament to Umtalani's conditioning that he's outworking this younger fighter who only has eight pro bouts. And now Wasim getting his shots in. And yeah, Wasim's having a much better round here. No, hold it, no, break! Might actually win this round. That's gonna be the first round that I get to Wasim. Here, uh, M. Thelani going to be leading as he has been with consistent punches, both hands up and down. But more and more, we're seeing Wasim come back with sharp, hard combinations, picking different different punches, high and low. Um, more of Wasim here is is you know making it making M. Thelani miss these punches now and now making him pay. That's what I want to see more of, and that's why I gave that round to Wasim. Round six between the Falcon and Babyface. Come on, come on. Get a head Watch it. Give me clean. Come on. Heads there. Come on. Well, seems certainly had the training camp that you think he needed for this fight, training in Las Vegas with Jeff Mayweather. Yeah, I mean, that, that's great pro experience there. Um, you know, you got, I got a guy with huge amateur background, doesn't have a lot of pro fights yet, but at least he's in a, in a, in a pro gym with an experienced coach and, uh, and getting looks at many, many different great professional sparring partners. Um Talani, he's 35 years old, been in 37 pro bouts, has only been knocked down once. That was way back in 2012 by Ricardo Nunez. Wasim has never been sent to the canvas. In fact, he said never even in amateur ranks. I really like what Wasim's starting to do now. He's starting to cut some more angles on the way out. Um, he's getting hit with far less punches. He's actually creating some openings. See, right there, cutting an angle off to the right, throwing that right hand back to his jab in between. Much, much better around these last two rounds for Wasim. No doubt the coach of, uh, coaching of Jeff Mayweather is starting to play a role. This is where having an experienced corner really, really can play dividends, uh, can pay dividends for, for a young fighter. Good counter punch there from Wasim. Oh, and they got him with a left hand. 
Mm -hmm. Cutting those angles, looking for openings, changing levels. Pretty stuff right now for Masim. And some movement in and out. Movement, no, 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 exactly. no Muthalani, it seems, would prefer this to be a phone booth type of fight. It's the body work now from the scenes. It does seem that Muthalani's punches are coming a little bit wider in this round, uh, maybe losing a little bit of steam as the fight progresses. Muthalani and uh, Wasim starting to pick it up. Can just sense in his body language confidence starting to come back into the body of Wasim. Absolutely. You just, it just looks like he's more comfortable with what he's, he's trying to do in there. Like the angles he's taking as well. When you're in there with a guy who's so busy, nice like and clean, nice is, and clean. Um, it's, it's really difficult to, to punch with them because they're constantly punching. Stop. Creating those angles allows a little bit of break in the action no, so Wasim no, no, no. can, can uh, get his, his actual uh, combination. Good angles, good angles. There's a left hand that connects there from hey. Mutalani. Was it enough to give him the round? I gave that round to Wasim. Uh, I got no him winning the last two. Don't juggle your home life and work life without it. Don't skip that office meeting for a board meeting without it. Don't keep it real. Keep it going or simply keep it in the family without it. And don't turn that business trip into an overdue family trip without it. The more you live between life and business, the Starting to create angles, having a little bit of that push and pull I was talking about earlier, changing levels, using his defense to make Emthalani a little bit uncomfortable and firing right back. This is, this is the Wasim that I expected, uh, the guy who's gonna be active, but also defensively savvy. Good anticipation there by Wasim as well to avoid some of those shots. So we are at the halfway point here in this IBF World Championship fight in the flyweight division between Muhammad Wasim and Maruti Umtalani. We are live at the Axiata Arena in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. Four world title fights on the card here tonight. And this is the first one right out of the gates. Umtalani dominating the earlier rounds that appeared, but back now it seems that Wasim is finding his form, finding his confidence. Last two rounds, he's really picked things up. He's getting much busier with his left hand. He's hooking off his jab well, he's jabbing high, he's jabbing low, uh, changing angles and going back to that left hand cons consistently at this point. Wasim is convinced if he does win this fight in Pakistan, there'll be a big, big celebration for him. The first boxing world champion in that country's history. Still a lot of work to do. Beautiful. This fight. We'll see how much urgency the Pakistani fighter shows us here. He's trying to become the first ever world champion from his country. Stop! No questions. Keep it clean. Keep it clean. Come on, keep it off the back. Come on. <laughs> Looks like they took pretty good care of that cut. Of the scene. Looks like it's over his left eye. <laughs> Wasim trying to match the output now of Empolani, letting those hands go. Not much power on the punches, though. Yeah, Umtalani with the more powerful shots, for sure. You can just see by the way the body reacts. Umtalani's head doesn't snap back when he gets hit, whereas Wasim not only usually snaps his head back a little bit, takes a step backwards. Yeah, you can see that um, Empolani's got great balance. You know, he's, he's got the, his weight between both legs, about 50-50. He's able to go forward, go backwards. And, and when, you're, when you're in that balance, you've got much better ability to absorb shots. There's a right hand from the man from South Africa. Yes, 
Back to the jab. And we're seeing Wasim work harder than he has the entire night in this 11th round. Well, hopefully, no, 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 hopefully his no, no, corner's no, 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 giving no, no, him that sense no, no, of urgency, no, no, no. saying, listen, man, you may be losing this fight. We need these last two rounds. There's a left hand that pushed Mukhtalani back, maybe for the first time this fight. It was a good shot, followed by a nice jab after that. But then again, it comes Mukhtalani comes back. Yeah, good cool two-way action here. And you can see Wasim now maybe sitting down on his punches a little bit, too. Yeah, he actually was able to back Mukhtalani up that in that exchange. Good one-two there from the African. Good round here, this 11th. Keep it clean. Work from there. Strong, yes! Strong again! Yes! Quick, quick, quick! Yes! Good output from yes. both these fighters here. Yes! Yes! Oh, oh the back! A big oh. one for the back end! And down goes Lutalani! What a shocking turn of events! Whoa. Here we go. Let's see how Five, Wasim six, capitalizes seven, on this one on eight. this momentum right now. Boy, Wasim needed something like that, and he got it here. And there's the bell to end round 11. Mohamed Wasim, who promised to knock out, almost got it. You want it? Do you want it? You gotta work fast and hard. Okay, breathe. Breathe. Let's take a look at that left hand that uh, that dropped in Thelani in round number 11. Listen, look at me. It's actually a sh little straight left hand. I think it was actually out of the southpaw stance. Landed right on the button. Off the jab and push him back now. He's gonna try and take your head off. It's fine. Stay tight. Yeah, you see, you see Wasim actually in a southpaw stance there and just fires a quick straight left hand from his rear foot. Well, we said you need to do things a little bit differently in order to get some new results, and then there you see it. I don't think Abdelani was uh, terribly hurt in that situation, uh, but that was a legit knockout. Mutalani's corner told him, hey, buddy, if you want it, you got to live fast and hard. Let's see how they square off here in the 12th round. Respect you. Good, clean work. Let's go. The vacant flyweight IBF world title on the line. It's going to come down to this last round. So we can impose their will, do the most damage. Is Mutalani beginning to wait here with three minutes left? Where was this Wasim five rounds ago? Man, he's, he's really coming out guns blazing. Watch your head. He's got a boatload of confidence, does Wasim. No, 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 stop, stop. Watch it, no, 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 no. no. Wasim's best serve, no and he's just no letting question. his hands Take go. Step back. He hasn't Listen shelled up the last couple rounds, back. and he's been much more effective. Can he put the 35-year-old down again? He may need to to win that oh. one. There's a left hand for Lutalani. Hard shot there. Keep it clean. And now Lutalani getting his shots in. Got some blood around the left eye of Lutalani. Keep it clean. Great way to end this fight. Great action round 12. No, stop, stop. Good work from both men. It's always a great round when in the back of the mind both fighters think, you know what, I might need a knockdown here. You can't push that. You can't push that. Very close fight on the cards, or so it would seem. Keep it clean. Body shot. Where's that jab from Mutalani that can buy him some space and time? You're pushing the head down. That's the last one. Let's go. Both eyes have swollen now from Mutalani. Been a, certainly a bruising encounter for both these men. Under a minute to go from Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. A lot of leather thrown between both men tonight. 
Definitely a bruising affair. Keep it clean. Keep it clean. In fights like these, you feel for a couple days after. Sometimes weeks. Oh, and a nice exchange again. Oh. You might see a knockdown. Good shot, Kip Rotolani. He may have gotten off the canvas and won this 12th now. Can he keep it up? Under 30 seconds to go. Finishing strong here. Is in, is in Bonnie, man. I think he's got what seemed hurt a little bit. Rotolani, what a performance here in round 12. As was seen, fights back now. 10 seconds to go. The IBF World Flyweight title on the line. They're oh. throwing up to oh. the bell. Oh, he's, he's hurt. Did Wasim do enough, or did the 35-year-old Lou Talani win yet another world title? Man, I wish we had three more rounds. Just started heating up. You guys fucking warned him. Well, Chris, I'll ask you. I know it's hard to give me a scorecard. Scorecard, but who do you think won this fight when all is said and done? I'm, I'm going to go with Enthalani uh, in this one. Very, very close. Uh, it just seemed like he, he won more of the early rounds. A lot of close rounds after after uh, after round six, really. Um, so I, I, I could see a draw. I could see it going the other way. But I, I go with the guy who's more consistent throughout. Of course, that 10-8 round in the 11th will be a big factor. But according to Chris Algieri, Enthalani Kind of racked up some of those earlier rounds. One through four, I believe, he gave all of them to the South African. He started fast. He was consistent throughout. Um, he definitely lost a bunch of those middle rounds, but um, you know he, he came back strong, and both these men fought super hard to close this fight out. Rutalani, a former IBF flyweight world champion, defended his title four times. Hasn't lost a fight since he was stopped because of cuts. In 2008 to Nonito Donaire. Let's see some of that hot and heavy action from round 12, Chris. This was just awesome back and forth. Two-way exchanges. Both men knew the fight was on the line. This, this was their world title fight in one round. They were throwing heavy, heavy leather back and forth. You know, when you seemed like one guy had it, the other guy would come right back. Um, they, I think they both hurt each other in that round. Incredible action. Way to close out of their championship fight. So the Falcon, who trains under the tutelage of Jeff Mayweather out in Las Vegas, Nevada, and the new would become the first and ever new. champion of Pakistan. His corner looks very confident, but perhaps they shouldn't be. The official score count cards now from Michael Buffer. Ladies and gentlemen, after 12 rounds, we go to the scorecards. Sylvester Avianza scores it, 114-113. That's the same score from Samuel Conda, 114-113. And Glenn Feldman, 116 to 110. All three scorecards go to the winner by unanimous decision. And now he is the new champion from South Africa, yeah! Moriti yeah! Babyface, Nzale! <laughs>